Hello, you too. <laughs> All right. This is probably going to be a short video because I can't film and work. And I don't have a tripod or something set up. And it might be a pain in the butt to try to set it up and move. It's already difficult as enough as it is. I'm afraid of falling through the, um, the roof. You know, I'm, I'm still kind of fat. <laughs> and being on the roof might not be the best idea. Anyhow, um, I'm on top of the little mobile home that has um, a, it has like a um, aluminum roof. So we had leaks the other day that came up from the bottom of the floor. I'm trying to figure out where the leak is, but um, don't really know where it is. So I'm just painting everything. I'm going to paint the, uh, the roof with elastomeric paint, which I've got here. And um, then I'm going to probably have to paint the building itself to try to seal any holes. I tracked this down, you know, tracked down where it might be leaking along the side of the house over there and along the walls, but I couldn't see any holes. Nothing that was really evident. Now, what I'm finding as I come up here to, to paint this this roof is that um, it's going to take more than one coating. I'm probably going to have to do about three passes. I don't know if you can see here. It, um, I don't know if it shows here. It It doesn't I don't know if it's just because it's um, the way the paint works or because it's kind of cool out here today while I paint. But the paint is like uh, not making a sheet, you know, it's making like little ridges and stuff where it might not be hitting everything. So I'm going to have to make a second pass and probably a third pass to try to get it fully coated. The other problem I see is that it didn't really do the sides where I think the leaks would be, you know, along the seam where the, there might be little holes, see little gaps and stuff like that. So what I'm probably going to have to do later is come up here with a brush, you know, and then just dip it, like goop that stuff on there and then just run it along the edge where the side is. That's probably where the leak is coming from. It's from one of these sides like this. See how it, it has like little gaps like that? So it might be running down one of those gaps and then getting into the house and somehow getting into... Um, you know, coming up underneath the floor. That's what I'm assuming is happening. Now, the interesting thing is, I think that it may be coming not directly from um, as high as the ceiling. It might be coming somewhere like midpoint at the window area. So those are other areas I'll be looking at. Um, I'll talk later about fixing that. But right now, I just want to let you know what's going on. Um, I don't know if you can see what I did here to cover the holes. This was like the vent hole. This one was for the... Um, it had like central... I don't know if it was central air conditioning and heating, but the thing was all rusted out. Uh, I didn't get out. I just am not using it. So I sealed the hole off using a, a dog bowl. <laughs> that, that that formerly silver thing was a dog dish. I had seen a, a, a dish that, you know, was in the house, and I just used that. Then the other end over there, that is the toilet vent. Um, uh, evidently, you know, the toilets, the system has to vent out. So they put it in the house in the bathroom. You don't really see where that pipe is, but it's hidden behind a wall. But I guess it, it vents out the sewer so that, um, you know, sewer gases come up through the house outside. But um, it didn't have a covering on it. So I just put a um, that blue uh, dish. <laughs> I got to put more silicone on it to get it to hold. It kind of fell apart. but And then I'll touch it up with paint. But it, it's being held together. This house is literally literally has um, a dog dish up here on the roof to block the water from going in. And uh, a plastic dish. <laughs> plastic wear to cover the hole. I, I, I guess they sell stuff in the store for this. But I'm like, you know, all you need is just kind of, some kind of lid to cover it. Now, it's not fully... That one's not fully shut. You know, it actually goes up and has air. So air can flow out. Because you don't want to close it off completely. Because you need the gas to come out and flow out. So, you know, it's like a little hat, but it's got holes underneath it so it can flow. This one is sealed, though, pretty much. So I put it all the way around. And it's because um, after I put up my panel downstairs, you know, in the house, when it rained a lot, I noticed that the panel got wet. Because water was actually raining through this opening here, running down the, the heating unit or the air conditioning unit. And then running out to the edge of the wall and getting the panels all wet. So I sealed it and that has stopped. The one issue I'm having up here is, um, I don't know if you can see the leaves already. 
Uh, the other day I came up here to try to track down where the leak was. So I went through and I cleaned out all the gutter. I took all the leaves out and yet more leaves have shown up. But I mean, it was packed full of leaves, which I had already cleared previously. So these trees here suck. <laughs> See all the leaves are coming off. But, I, I, you'll see I have a broom. I had a broom. I had a broom over here. I was sweeping up here and I swept it all clear and as I started painting, leaves were falling while I'm trying to paint. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm trying to, I had to clear a spot paint and then, you know, the leaves fall on it and just hope that it doesn't stick. And then when I come to do a second coating, I try to clear it. But, you know, I really don't like being up here because I'm pretty fat and uh, like I'm, I'm about 200, about 205, 200 pounds. And uh, this roof, I don't know if you can see, it's, it's really thin. But I think they have wood and stuff under here. But when you walk, it flexes. And each time it flexes, there's a chance that it could pop, you know, the seam. And then we, we just created another leak. So, um, yeah, somebody, was, uh, Mel was saying, can I invest in a quarter leaf, leaf blower? That might be something to consider, you know, to come up here and clear it. The other thing I'm probably going to do is they, they sell... Or they have companies that do gutter guards but I think they charge a lot of money to come out here and they put a gutter guard on the gutter but I'm thinking of making a homemade gutter guard I'm trying to figure out what I can use to, to make it that everybody has access to and it would be easy to do and not too expensive because I, I think I'd seen advertising for those gutter guard people and I think they charge like probably a thousand dollars or more to come out and do it I'm hoping that I could put it all together myself and what you would do is basically put like a lid over the gutter, but it has to allow water to go through, but no leaves, you know. Otherwise, it keeps clogging up and you get the problem that you have to keep cleaning the gutter every so often. Which, you know, we're going to be cutting some more branches here to get ready to cut like a whole bunch. This, this, I don't know if you can see the, the cut over there. It used to come down and hit the, uh, the ceiling right there, the, the roof. You know, the branches were actually bent down on top of the house. I had thought it might have poked a hole through, and it didn't. But there is a spot over there that that's the leak spot, which I haven't gotten to yet. That It's been repaired. but So you can see the, the roof is actually in pretty good shape. Um, this is just discoloration, but now it's going to end up looking all white. So it'll look better. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see the top of Little Blue. Little Blue was getting leaves and stuff and I got to climb up there again but I was actually up there walking on a little not little blue um the RV good enough and I fell through I fell through the roofing of the RV so I tried to quickly fix it but I don't think I did because I went in there and I noticed this water damage from the, the drop ceiling that I had installed so it's going to take me going back to, to refix it you know but that hasn't been the priority because right now I got to get this house done and um so I'm probably going to have to sign off here in a second so I can finish. Uh, read your comments here. Yeah, 1954 says, uh, Shadow says, leaves will act as a patch material. Yeah, they could, or they could rot and make dirt and make another hole. <laughs> you know, originally when I was up here, the first time I came up here when I bought the house, there, I, I kid you not, see how the leaves gather like that? They had been up here for so long, they became dirt. The leaves became dirt, and there were little trees growing up there. there. There were trees growing on the roof, little bushes and stuff growing. So I came, and I had to, it, it had about about two or three inches worth of dirt up here, like soil, topsoil, really nice soil for growing. So um, I had to get all that off here. It was literally under dirt. The roof had, had dirt on it, and trees were growing. So we took some of that dirt and we scattered it throughout the yard. So the yard has some really good um, soil. But you can see how the leaves are there. The good thing about leaves is they make it so you don't have to cut grass because they don't allow grass to grow. The bad thing about leaves is they fall all over your roof and if you have gutters, which most houses would have gutters, they fall in them. And the other thing is, of course, if you want to grow grass, you can't because leaves will kill the grass. So... That's what we're dealing with right now. Oh, by the way, this is Dollar Tree Roller and Dollar Tree Handle. I bought a more expensive one from Home Depot the other day. Remember I told you I was going to do the roof? So I bought the roller with the stick on it. 
that was a piece of crap. Don't buy that one. I think it was like eight ninety five or nine dollars or something for the. Um, it had the it's like eight or twelve dollars somewhere in that range. It had the the pole and it had the the roller and it's wider than this one. First off, it wouldn't even fit in the paint roller thing. And then uh, secondly, while I was using it, ten minutes after using it, I was dipping it in and then you know moving the stick to to coat it, and this part broke. It didn't just fall out, it broke inside. I was like, 10 minutes. I got 10 minutes of use on it. So, I ended up getting the Dollar Tree one, which I had at the house already, and putting a pole together. I had bought, remember all those brooms and stuff I bought the other day? I had bought a stick for a broom tip, and I had one of these cheap um, Dollar Tree paint rollers. So, that's what's finishing the job. It's a case where the, the $1... The one dollar and twenty-five cent, <laughs> the one dollar and twenty-five cent tool beats the nine or twelve dollar one. But actually, it's more than a dollar twenty-five because you got the the roller, then you got the stick, so it's two dollars and fifty cents for the Dollar Tree one. So that's what we're dealing with. Anyhow, I am going to go ahead and sign out. Um, I'll update you guys. I'm going to paint this once today. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it more than once. Uh, hopefully, I can get it done before it gets dark. I'm going to try to go all the way across. i still got to go all the way over there. And then, um, have to come back up here again. Either tomorrow or another day. The sooner, the better. To try to do a second coat. And then, again, for a third coat to make sure it's thick. You know. Uh, but the big thing is, like, I don't think this is actually fixing the leaking problem that we're having. Because the leaking problem, I think, is coming from the wall. So some of you are like, why didn't you deal with the wall first? Well, I needed to deal with the roof. <laughs> I wanted to come up here and paint this roof before I do the walls. And then um, the house is going to be painted, you know. So i got to get with the, the wife to figure out what color and stuff. And then maybe we'll both paint the thing. I don't know. I, I may just come up here with the um, this material here. And then just go along the edge, which is what I probably should have done instead of trying to paint the whole roof. But I figured I would do the whole roof, then I would do the edge. That way it's all done. You know, you don't you do not do like part of it and have to come back later and say, man, it didn't get finished. Anyhow, I am going to go ahead and sign out. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for taking the time to comment, um, clicking that like button. I don't know if, if uh, the, the spam bots have come back or if YouTube is starting to promote this channel again. Somebody said they started to see my videos again. So maybe YouTube is re-promoting this channel after leaving it alone for like three or four years. <laughs> so it, it might start showing up, but um, our, our subs have started to go back up again. Uh, for the last month or so, my subs were like down to like less than 10 people per month. And sometimes it was negative, like as much as negative 15. I don't know if YouTube was deleting accounts or people were just leaving or what was going on. But it's starting to climb back up. We're currently at about um, roughly about 30, 35 per month growing. At, at its peak, this channel was getting roughly about 150 to 250 a month, which isn't a lot, but it's a lot better than 35 and it's a lot better than negative 15. <laughs> so I don't know. I've also, if you guys haven't noticed, I've, I've changed the name of the channel to try to re reflect more what we're doing right now. Um, I figure if people are looking to live, you know, on the grid, but off the grid, live off grid while still on grid, this is the channel to tune in right now because that's what's happening right now. So the other thing I want to talk about a little bit is, you know, you guys were asking about solar panels. You can see I have all this pretty much flat roof. So it's actually an ideal candidate for putting um, solar up. That may happen. Don't know. The, the concern I would have is if I put the solar up, Am I going to have to poke holes in the roof and then make more leaks? <laughs> That's something I'm not sure I want to create. So I might get some super heavy duty glue or something. Silicone or some kind of super glue, maybe Gorilla Glue, and glue the panels down to wood or something. That way I don't poke any holes into the roof itself because I do have a, I think it's a legitimate concern to be drilling holes in this old building and making more water come in, you know. Uh, the other option is just to use the uh, get that roof done over there on that that side building and use panels over there. But even then, you know, we're putting a new roof on there. That would be poking holes. I did poke holes in the RV, and it's leaking now. But it was leaking before, so you know, it's not like I I don't think I made the leaks. 
I think I made the leak when I fell through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Uh, so Janice says, yeah, she did saw the video and suggestions. So basically, yeah, I, I think YouTube may be promoting me or they're starting to track what, what channels you watch and actually promoting the channels you watch. Because for the longest time, I noticed channels I was subscribed to and stuff. I wasn't even seeing when they were uploading. So I don't know what was going on with YouTube. Maybe they had some kind of technical difficulty. But while we're up here, this is the view of the yard, the RV. Um, let me try to show you a little bit here without falling through. The house is, I, I, I think it's, um, I don't know, it's 15 or 20 square, I don't know, square feet. So that's how big this, no, it's got to be longer than feet. Yards? No, 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 it, it's not yards. You know how they measure it, like, by acres? They measure land by acres, the plot. I think my plot is, like, point one. I think it's point fifteen or point twenty, somewhere in there, somewhere in that range. It's smaller than what I had at my old house, but it's a pretty good size. And down there, where the crazy growth is happening, see how that green over there? That is the drain field for the septic system. So I'm gonna have to clear all that again. And I don't know if you can see all the the leaves here on these trees. I had cut all the branches off, and they've grown back, so the tree is not wanting to die. Actually, several trees. And then this one, probably going to be cut too. You know, I don't know. The, the concern is that um, a storm could knock it into the house, and then there goes the house. Because you know, it's right next to it. The, and then that big one right there is growing right up to the house, right up to the, the porch. You know, it's like, I don't know how trees grow around a porch, but they evidently, when, when they hit a uh, building or something, they go around it. They don't go right through it. <laughs> I don't know if they're smart or what, but trees go around. But then they stick their branch over and then start pushing down on the roof, trying to collapse the roof. So I cut most of this side so that the tree's weird. It's got on that side. That way if it falls, hopefully it falls forward and not back into the house. And then this other tree was, you know. So lots of trees in this yard. And then right next to the house, there's trees. That tree right there scares me. That, that huge thing right there, I think it le it's leaning, see how it's at a bad angle? And one of the trees there had broken already, one of the branches had broken. So that tree right there is leaning right at my house. It would not take much for it to break and fall right into my house. So I'm thinking of trying to cut it, um, but have to cut it and have it fall away. <laughs> not cut it and have it fall right on the house. You know, it, it's like, it's not directly over the house, but if you cut it, it could fall and lean into the house. And it's not easy to cut because it's about um, 30, 40 feet high. So it's hard to access. And I don't think I can reach it with my, um, my extended saw. So I need to figure it out. I mean, I have to cut it lower and have a line and pull it, have somebody pull it, you know, maybe tie it to a car and try to have the car ready to pull it as it's falling. That way it doesn't, it'll pull it that way. <laughs> to fall in an empty field versus falling right on the house. Uh, you know, th this is the neighbor's yard and stuff, but they they um, they aren't they haven't moved in yet. They just bought the land uh, about a month after I bought the house. So, you know, I think they bought the the land to eventually put the house here. But that's what's going on. Anyhow, I am going to go ahead and sign out. Don't cut limbs on the tree when alone. Yeah, Deb's telling me really good advice. I don't know, Deb, if you had tuned in before. I fell. The, the tree branch fell and hit the roof, and it made a hole in that building, and I fell down through the building while I was standing on the, um, the ladder. It was like surf, surf, surfing on a ladder. And surprisingly, it didn't go all the way down. I slid down, like skiing almost, and... I was standing on the ladder, like balanced. <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but I didn't die. I didn't fall. Had I fallen, I could have died. So I'm a little weary of doing stuff like this, like even coming up here to paint, you know, without somebody here to spot me uh, in case something happens. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. I will update you guys on what's going on. I don't know if you're going to see more up here. You might, but I don't like being up here very long, but I, you know, so 
I hope you guys uh, are having a good day wherever you're at and staying safe. And I hope everyone is um, staying warm. <laughs> Until next time, everyone, take care. God bless you all. Please stay safe. Bye-bye now.